Venus is an unexplored planet in our solar system, which is very similar to Earth in size. This volcanic planet has much to offer, so team, no one from University of Technology Einhorn has the mission to develop two ultra-intelligent robots which will explore planet Venus. These robots will collect rock samples from the surface of a volcanic planet and they will bring them to the lab so that these uh, rock samples will be further analyzed in lab. Apart from sample pickups, robots must protect themselves against the hostile environment and for that they are equipped with last generation ER and UR sensors to avoid obstacles and to successfully complete this mission. Now, my colleagues will give you a more in-depth explanation of the subsystem of just robots. Three infrared sensors were added to the bot in order to safely navigate the terrain. Two are attached to the left and right side, facing downwards to detect dark surfaces such as the cliffs and boundaries. The last is attached directly beneath the clamps and is used to detect light surfaces such as samples. The downward facing sensors on the left and right are configured such that when reflecting against the light surface, such as the default ground, it will output a value of 0. However, under a dark surface it will output a value of 1. The following flowchart shows the algorithm used to avoid cliffs and boundary lines. Whenever the sensor outputs a 1, it has detected either a cliff or a boundary line. Whenever a detection is made, the bot stops movement immediately, reverses a bit and then turns the opposite direction to the sensor that detected something. So if the left sensor detected, then the bot stops, reverses and turns right. In order to avoid mountains, the provided ultrasound sensor is used. The sensor is used with the new ping library for the Arduino platform. This simplifies the procedure to measure one parameter and convert it to centimeters. Therefore, the ultrasound sensor constantly measures anything in front of the bot and returns the distance in centimeters. The following flowchart shows the algorithm used to avoid mountains. Whenever the ultrasound sensor detects something less than 30 centimeters in front, the bot will stop immediately. The bot will then turn to the right and check the ultrasound sensor again. If an object is still within 30 centimeters of the bot, it will turn right again. Otherwise, the bot will turn left to face the original direction and check the ultrasound sensor once more. If an object is still blocking the bot, it will turn right and repeat the same procedure. Once the bot finds an opening, it will move forward and continue exploring. The team decided that an effective way of traveling the site is to map every step the robot takes. A matrix system was created to detect obstacles and borders and add them into the matrix so that finding samples and going back to the lab can be fast as possible. The matrix was designed to work theoretically by hard coding the initial position of the robot and the lab. The obstacles and borders were also implemented as an example so that only the movement of the robot can be simulated. After succeeding to overcome most exceptions of movement and have a fully explored matrix, the code was compiled to Arduino. The coordinate system should have been able to use all the other parts of the robot, but worked only with separate sections. The robot manages to update the position of obstacles in the matrix by using the sensors, and it can also calculate and map the distance it traveled by using the encoders. When the robot finds a sample, the code is designed to divide the matrix into four parts. The robot should go to the border closest to the lab and follow it until it reaches the drop-off point. When the robot encounters an obstacle while returning to the lab, it should only follow two sides of it and then go straight until it finds another border to follow. After going back to the lab, the robot will start the run procedure. This procedure uses a two-line alignment. The first black line is the alignment line, which tells the robot that the ramp has started. The second one is the drop-off line. When the robot detects the second time a black line, it will stop and it will drop the sample into the lab. To differentiate the two lines, the code uses a counter in order to keep track of what line the robot is on. Once the sample has been dropped off, the robot will reverse completely to the end of the ramp, 
and finally do a 180 degrees turn to go away from the ramp. The robots will communicate with each other via the Zigbee modules. It operates on 2.4 GHz and has a range of approximately 20 meters, which is more than sufficient for our planet. By switching the switch from USB to micro, the robots will use the Zigbee communication and will be able to communicate. Here we show that the Zigbee communication is working between the robots. One robot will drive forward until it sees a sample and then pick up this sample. After it has picked up the sample, it will send this information via Zigbee to the other robot. Once the other robot has received this, it will move forward as a proof that it receives something. In the actual code, we will use the Zigbee connection for keeping track of the amount of samples picked up. When all samples have been picked up, the robots will stop searching for the samples and return to the lab. The second thing that the robots communicate is whether or not they are currently at the lab. This will prevent that both robots will be present at the lab simultaneously. Here you can see the basic idea of the code that we use for receiving the data via Zigbee. Whenever a robot enters the lab, leaves the lab or picks up a sample, it will send a specific character via Zigbee. This will then be received by the other robot, which will then perform and execute the right action. For receiving an F, the robot will subtract one from the number of samples that are still left on the planet. When it receives an L, it knows that the other robot is currently at the lab. When it receives a P, it will know that the other robot is currently on the planet searching for samples. Through extensive testing and implementation, the team managed to develop individual components of the system that accomplish incremental tasks. More specifically, the team managed to develop a working obstacle avoidance system such that the bot can roam around the terrain safely and pick up a sample that it comes across, a matrix coordinate system that can simulate the desired mapping and navigation behavior, and a ramp procedure that allows the bot to safely drive up the ramp, drop off a sample, and drive off. However, it did not fulfill the task of returning back to the lab. This is a point of improvement for the future, which would allow the continuous operation of the bot to explore, find a sample and return to the lab. Moreover, the integration of the components proved to be a difficult task, and in the end, these components could not be combined into one fully integrated system. This is something that should be developed further in order to achieve continuous and autonomous operation. The reliability of the bot's behavior is not fully robust either, which is another point of improvement. One issue is a result of differences in lighting and surface colors, but can be improved by implementing more sensors and thus providing the bot with more information. Another is the slight delay the bot encounters before reacting to a detection. This is likely a result of the delays introduced in the move servos function and is something that can be optimized for more efficient behavior. In conclusion, Although the bot cannot perform the goal completely autonomously, the team managed to develop individual components that are ready to be implemented into one code for a complete system.